We've taken a look at a lot of different rare items within the Call of Duty franchise as of the past couple of weeks, maybe well into a month or two now at this point. But while we're still in this sort of limbo period between games of World War II, there's not all that much to talk about in updates and other new items like that. And we're also still a few weeks out from Black Ops 4 when we can actually talk about a lot of new stuff dropping, a lot of new tips and everything. But while we're in this period, I kind of wanted to take a look at something that is a little bit more of a tougher to gauge rare item list, but definitely still has some things on there that are rather rare in their own rights. That being the rarest weapons and weapon variants within Call of Duty history. Now for this one, obviously it only goes back a certain amount of time and it's not something that goes all the way back to say COD 4 and beforehand. And that's simply because only as of recently we've seen weapons introduced via weather supply drops or variants, whatever it may be. So we're only going back a few years here in this list, but it's still some stuff that you might not ever have the opportunity to get again. And some things that if you have them, you might be among a few small number of people that do. So that said, today we're going to take a look at the six rarest COD weapons in the franchise history. So if you guys have any that you want to add to this list, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you have any of these, let me know if you're among that small group of people that may have them. But that said, let's start out with one that I believe is honestly the rarest out of any weapon variants, out of any weapon entirely that we've seen in Call of Duty, that being the PPSH Iron Curtain 2. Now, for those of you guys that have been around the channel, of course, you know that I absolutely love this variant. I have since it was ever introduced and there was an exploit to see it months before it went live, but all complete bias aside, simply by how you have to attain it, actually does make this probably the rarest weapon in COD history. So for those of you guys that may not necessarily be up to speed with the PPSH Iron Curtain 2, you haven't really heard much about it, you haven't seen much gameplay of it, the way you were able to obtain this was via a 24 hour only contract in Call of Duty World War 2. It was two specific days across two weeks that you could end up getting this. They were Saturday specials if you will, in which you had 24 hours to activate a contract for, I think it was 7,000 armory credits and it would cost you 225 kills in game with SMGs. Now to make matters even better, it was actually out there during the multiplayer beta for Black Ops 4. So the player base was obviously split between those that had PlayStation 4 that could do this. And of course, once it made its way over to the beta for Xbox One and PC, all platforms, but you had to make the conscious approach to actually go in, launch up World War II, and then activate the contract. Now, once you activated the contract, you had as much time as you possibly would need to complete it outside of in-game time. You had three hours in-game, which usually translates to about 18 matches to do that. So you had a lot of time in game, but once you ended up, say, looking at the calendar, you could have completed it as of today. It didn't really matter what date you ended up going in and grinding it out, so long as you completed 225 kills in game time in three hours. But just by how this was approached, two days only of a 24 hour contract, you had 48 hours total to collect that and activate that contract. And so if you weren't around for either of those days, well, it's lost the tests of time. I'm sure that at some point during the year coming up, it'll be activated once again, but at that point, it might not be as worth it because Black Ops 4 will be upon us and many people might not actually go in and still play World War II. So in that sense, only two days total to get this weapon makes it a pretty rare catch when you think about how often you can end up getting other weapons, especially considering even just the time scale in World War II of collections, where you have about four to five weeks, maybe depending on the event, to get one of those collection specific items that'll be lost for, again, a long period of time until they're reopened for another short period of time. Outside of that, let's move on to the second rarest here in my books, that being the M14 from Black Ops 4. If you guys remember this one, it it was available only in supply drops, the weapon itself, no variants. It was only available for around a month's time, if I'm remembering correctly. And I also think that it was made available again for another week as sort of an extension with that. But when you take a look at it, my personal least favorite system for weapons and supply drops was Black Ops 3. So you have all these items within the game all thrown into one loot pool where there's no separation between the two. Unlike collections, you don't have the option to chip away at specific things. You don't have different supply drops for different different loot pools like you had in Modern Warfare Remastered, and so therefore everything from calling cards, emblems, reticles, grip variants, down to the weapons were all in the same pool of content. So to put in a weapon that was only available for a few weeks time, to me I think is probably the worst way you could do this, but it was only available in those supply drops for a little bit of time. The M14, from what I've seen, I personally still don't have it, was a decent weapon as well, so that kind of makes it a little bit more exclusive and a little more rare and maybe a little more sought after. But regardless, again, another limited time item only plus behind the RNG that is supply drops, well, even if there was a boost to the increased number of drops with that, 
still rather rare in the grand scheme of how many weapons are out there in the Call of Duty franchise. After that, we're going to jump back into the time machine and go even back further, to which we're going to go all the way back to Advanced Warfare for this next one. The next one being the Atlas 45 A3 pistol. And if you guys don't ever remember seeing this in your armory within Advanced Warfare, I don't blame you because it was only available for a very, very short period of time. It was a weapon I'm pretty sure was out of supply drops. Having done a ton of research trying to dig back into it, I really don't find any mention of this weapon like like at all within Advanced Warfare and anything that cataloged back in the day, the weapon variants and anything considered. Now, I don't recall this one being a pre-order bonus or any sort of limited time edition bonus item as well. I know there was the Atlas AE, which was the Atlas limited edition as well as a pre-order bonus from GameStop, but this one doesn't seem to tie in with that one. I think this was just available simply out of supply drops, but it was retired, which makes it even more rare because if you were to go and try and open up as many supply drops as you'd want, you'd never come across this one again because it was pulled from the loot pool, and so if you have it, you have it, but if not, it's not something you'll be able to ever have the opportunity to get again. Now, in terms of if you ended up missing out on anything here with this one, not really. It doesn't offer all that much compared to, say, where the Inferno or the Obsidian Steed would offer awesome upgrades to the Ball 27. This is instead one that actually lowered the damage, but then also made a tighter hip spread. So you could hip fire a little better with this pistol, but that was really the only thing it offered. Of course, being a pistol as well, it wouldn't be something you'd primarily go into combat with, but if you wanted a cool variant that was only there for a limited time, this is definitely one for the history books. Next one up on the list is something that we touched on ever so slightly in that last one, the GameStop exclusive Atlas Limited Edition exclusive item, that being the Ball 27 AE. Now this was a Ball 27 outfitted in an Atlas camo, which looked actually really awesome. I think this was probably one of my favorite camos. I wish it was something that was available on all weapons, not just on some certain variants that were pre-order bonuses. But regardless, it's a clean looking camo, and of course is one that's very nice, but seeing that we just already touched on it a little bit, there's not really much more to go into it with. The only thing that really did was messed around with the fire rate, so again, you're not missing out on much if you don't have this one, but overall, it's one that again is a little bit of a collector's item and is no longer really available, but I think you can still get it if you really, really want to, though, of course, it's a three-year-old game now going on four at this point, but if you still want to get that Atlas edition, it's not locked behind something like a pre-order bonus that is no longer available, so in that sense, really the call comes down to you whether or not you find it worth it, which three years into the game, four years almost, I don't know if I would. Next up on the list, the second to the last one is that of the EM-1 Quantum. Now, this one was a weapon that I didn't really touch within Advanced Warfare. It was fun as a novelty at the very beginning, but outside of the first week or two, you started to realize it wasn't the most practical weapon in pretty much any gunfight. It was a slow, air quote, rate of fire, didn't do all that much damage, and it had a ton of recoil that made the pattern, again, kind of weird to control, and so therefore, it wasn't the best pick for pretty much any gunfight. But the EM-1 Quantum was available out of the Advanced Arsenal Pack, which was a pre-order bonus that you got for pre-ordering, I think, any edition anywhere. I think that this was available at any retailer, it was just a matter of you pre-ordering, and then you ended up getting this, which actually accounted for the AK-12G, as well as Crossbow B2 variants on top top of the EM-1 Quantum. So you can also throw those in the mix as well if you're really looking to kind of round out this list of that pack in particular. But regardless, the Advanced Arsenal pack was just simply for pre-ordering. So if you got that, you got the weapons as well as again, the EM-1 Quantum, which has a gold finish, a gold trim to it. And you got some other customization items as well. But the final thing we'll talk about here at this one jumps back up to Call of Duty World War II, which to me is one of the rare items just simply because it takes so long to get there and it's not in the supply drop pool. I think that it was there at one point, but around early December it was moved out and then made only for the social score ranking, that being the Bar Flyboy 2. This is available once you hit rank 20 in the social score rankings, and it's a much more polished off version than that of just the regular Flyboy, which is still an awesome looking variant to begin with, but this one, though it does take so long to get there, the unfortunate part is that it's pretty much just like any other bar variant. It's very similar in iron sights to that of the Cool Hand and Cool Hand 2, and the inspect animation is the same as the default inspect animation, so unfortunately, while it takes a lot to get there, there's not all that much reward outside of just a cool matte black finish with gold trim on the weapon itself. 
But that said, I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up because that brings us now to the final piece of that list. So that said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are there any in particular that I may have missed out on that you would love to see and get accounted for in the rarest weapons list for Call of Duty in the entire franchise overall? Is there any of these that you guys have? If so, obviously let me know how many of these did you actually end up getting in your inventories or in each individual game. I'd love to hear your thoughts down there and how many you actually have. But also that said, Thank you guys just so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. If you are also new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Call of Duty content. Black Ops 4 is coming up with Blackout and all that kind of stuff coming along with it. World War II still has a little bit of time left, so we might have a video or two remaining in the tank here with that. And of course, there's anything relating to Call of Duty, we got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of that interests you, make sure that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be. That link is down there in the description below. If you guys also want to follow me over on Instagram, get a little more active over there, so that link is down there for you to check out as well. But all that said and out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.